I will say you called to order at, let me see what the iPhone says, 518. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, I know that two of our members are on their way to purchase a car and they're going to try to get online and talk by phone in the car on the way back from Rhode Island. But <laughs> oh my goodness. we shall see. We shall see. So uh, the first order is, even though it's not in the uh, in the agenda, is to approve the minutes or to amend them as necessary. Uh, thank you, Mark, for getting these out. Uh, any My pleasure. additions or changes that anyone suggests? Motion thorough. to approve. Do I hear That's second? Good. Seconded. Okay, moved and seconded that we approve the minutes for the October 5th meeting. Uh, all in favor? Well, I guess we can vote. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, thank you. All I mean, right. you learned it's better to ask forgiveness than permission. Yeah, yeah, yeah I like that. I like that. Uh, okay, so the first item is um, Kayla's issues. So Kayla, why don't you take off? Well, this was initiated when uh, a person that I'm getting to know um sounded really interested in this and said that she would be interested in being a part of the committee. And one of the reasons that I think it would be exciting to add her is that she's a person with significant physical disabilities who lives on Golden Court. And um, and so I wondered, you know, we've, we've been feeling like it's a, it's a big committee, but we don't really represent all that we want to represent. So I'm wondering how we feel we could address that. About trying to encourage more diversity in our membership. By, uh, <clears throat> by including this person, we would be doing that. I will note that uh, there are still uh, there's one person who has not been to any meeting and hasn't responded to my emails, uh, Flory attendee. Um, I don't know what's going on with him. He's, but been, to, he's been to one or two meetings. Um, I think I don't just one. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And since then haven't heard from him. He may be busy. Um, I know he runs a cleaning, painting yes. business, right? Yes. Uh, and also, Mark has indicated that he might have to drop out of the committee or not attend meetings or something like that because his business is starting up again. Um, um, do you mean Taro? Taro. Taro, I'm sorry. No. Yeah. So what I'm wondering is, should should we talk about this case by case or do we need to have a a policy in place doesn't any uh new potential committee member have to go through the same process with a letter of interest and then the select board has to approve that just like they did with us i think that's the formality I my thought is that if that we first have to decide that we would invite someone to do that, and that would be something that the committee should at least take under advisement or have an opinion on. I'm personally, I'm okay with having more people on the committee. I mean, diversity is a very diverse subject. You know, a lot of uh, racism is obviously a big topic right now. And so we've, you know, obviously we've thought about that a lot, um, but physical disability is pretty important, accessibility, that kind of thing. Um, the wonderful email I got back from the um, 
Senior Center talked a lot about age and eco- economic related exclusion, which is also super important. Um, you know, there's a lot of different kinds of diversity and a lot of different kinds of inclusion and exclusion going on that all the committee is going to solve those problems. But if we're the ones who are gathering the information to present to the select board to say, these are some issues that we might like to address with town policy, you know, we need to be able to gather all those different kinds of information. And that's a lot to do. I mean, if we had two or three people in the committee on each of those topics, that's a big committee we need. Anyone else like to speak to this? I don't remember that. I mean, anyone, please step up and, and correct me. But my impression, my recollection of the, for example, Flory it, it, it attend is that someone invited him to to come, and he came to a couple meetings, and we had him in the email uh, loop. But I don't know that he ever went to the step. Of, I mean, I, it could have happened without my knowing, but I'm not aware that he wrote a letter requesting you know, a letter of interest to the select board. Um, I don't think he did. No, so he might be more, he might see himself as a guest, which, which I guess he would be. Um, and I don't know, maybe we have different status. We have voting members, we have guests, we have frequent guests and infrequent guests. Uh, I will take that on myself to contact Flory uh, again and try to reach him and find out what his interest is and yeah. what he'd like to do. Uh, as a point of order, uh, do you think we can vote on this without a quorum? I mean, we haven't, I don't know the rules. Yes, Pat. Before we do that, Wayne, I've been like, looking through the notes and I think someone referenced that Kristen, Christian mentioned that, that the select board wanted a smaller committee than this. So, so to me, that is one of the issues here is, is there a limit? Like is the select board given us a limit in terms of membership, number limit? I, I don't know the answer, but I think that answer might guide our direction in this matter. I understand that's a recommendation and not a limit. Okay. I think that's my understanding. I can clear that up with Christian. Um, I kind of have an image that is one model that might or might not work. I, since I'm very visual, graphically oriented as an architect, I, I picture this round table with the voting members at it and then a ring of chairs around that with uh, advisors, guests, uh, input um, that might not have to go through all the steps of coming to every single meeting or being a appointed member. I don't know what you would call those. Um, but that's just one model I was thinking might be how we're operating. I don't know if that's our intent, but, and then there's guests, but I mean, I think any committee can have guests because we talked about inviting guests to come speak. But if you have someone that comes occasionally, I don't know. I think if someone is interested in joining, especially if it sounds like we might be losing a few members, it might be helpful because I feel like we have a lot of work on our plates that we've taken on and we have so many different things um, already on the horizon that, and I know we're all extremely busy people. So, I mean, I, I'm totally in favor if someone wants to join of having them write that letter of intent, the select board can always say, no, we don't want any more people on your committee. And that would be up to them. But um, I feel like especially with Taro and some other people, maybe not being able to show up or commit as much time as we lose people, it might be helpful to bring in new energy. 
I agree. I agree. I, I will agree. follow up uh, as a first step to this. I will follow up with Taro and Corey to see if they are actually leaving the committee. And if that leaves two positions open, that would, uh, that might influence the procedure and it might not. I think the next step would be for us to say today that we would like to invite this person to be a member. Uh, the person from Golden Court. Yes. Yeah. I would love to reach out to her and say that if she wants to go through the application process that we'd be really interested in having her. Um, shall I, cons are, are we ready for a, a vote on this uh, to see who's in favor? Um, Joanne? Oh, I just want to just pipe in and say that when I first heard about this committee, it was way before the you know this year with George Floyd and all that and it was due to an issue that someone had who was from Golden Court mm -hmm. so I just want to acknowledge that 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 this sounds like a good direction so uh shall I ask the question of those assembled are you in favor of inviting this person to be a member of the committee and encourage her to apply to the select board. Yes, let's vote. Yes. yes. All those in favor, I see a unanimous yes. version. Uh, Kayla, may I ask you to reach out to her and tell her what's necessary um, to do that? Yep. So she would, she would write to the select board, but through you and Mark? Is that the system? I don't think so. I think she writes directly to the board. Or or should she go through Christian? Because he's our liaison to the board. I don't know. I can ask um, Andrea. I think Christian seems like he's been, well, I guess he's only missed a couple. But yeah, I could ask them how we should go through that. Would you be willing to do that, uh, Mark? Sure. Yeah. All right, so I'll wait until I hear back from you, Mark, okay? Sure. Um, and I just, as I'm writing my notes, Wayne, uh, you mentioned Taro, and was there someone else you said that might be? Taro and Flory. I oh, Flory. will follow up to Flory. see if they yeah. are actually going to be full members of the committee or okay. uh, need to withdraw. Uh, Okay. Um, is that satisfactory, Kayla? Okay. Number two. Um, Kayla received a Boston Globe article from Patrick, or the library director, about Groton's possible history as a sundown town and Ku Klux Klan stronghold. Do people have ideas or suggestions regarding how we might learn about our town's history? And I assume that means our town's history in regards to that issue. Ideas? Thoughts? Do we know, is there any work being done in this area, Amy, at the high school in the history department? Not regarding local history as far as I know. I mean, we have some school history, but I don't think we have much in the way of local history. Is anyone connected to our historical society? No, but they'd be worth reaching out to. I'd be glad to reach out. Thank you. Okay, will you do that and then bring back information at our next meeting? I think it's interesting that um, uh, it's just been made public that the first slaves were brought to this country in 1629, which is about the time that Hadley was established. Mm. I have no idea if there's any connection at all, but it seems interesting to me. Okay, uh, number three, 
Sarah notes that she's also in a small working group of Hadley Learns, an organization that was introduced to, she was introduced to while enjoying a book release video by the Hadley Senior Center. Sarah will report on some effective recruitment techniques she has observed at Hadley Learns. Sarah. Um, yeah, that got a little ahead of us, but anyway, yeah. So the uh, three-part book discussion thing that I did through the uh, Council on Aging led me into this Hadley Learns group, which was kind of exciting. And so I did another discussion group with them and then we broke out into interest groups. And because I sort of came to this through, you know, how do I make sure I never read about my police department in the newspaper uh, <laughs> in this regard? Um, I chose the, the group that was gonna talk about that stuff. And there's like four of us in it, uh, me, um, a guy who's a student at UMass, another woman, and Humera, who you may have heard of, yeah, through the school committee. And um, she had a great thing to say, which was, let's look around for what are the techniques that other places are using, both for recruitment and for training, that work and then find out who in town is interested in trying them and get some buy-in from the people that are already interested. And she said, a lot is happening at the school, that that's where a lot of juice is, is bubbling up right now. Rather than, for instance, I mean, I knew that it would be a bad technique for me to just walk into the police department and say, how do I make sure that this never happens in Hadley? They would just say, oh, don't worry your head about that. Uh, it probably also wouldn't work for us to say, oh, I read about this technique of training and recruiting that you should do. That probably wouldn't be so good either because you, you don't want to create an adversarial or a, I'm going to tell you how to do your job kind of situation. Um, you want to present something, say, hey, this is exciting and, and it works and it's great. And who wants to try it and get some buy-in from people that are already interested in doing it. So again, I'm still totally a beginner and mostly listening, but what strikes me too about Hadley Learns versus this committee, because Hadley Learns isn't a official town committee, it's a place where people can come and go quickly. You know, they don't have to apply to be a member or anything like that. Meetings don't need to be recorded. It's very nimble and you go where the energy is. You know, who wants to work on this project? Who wants, if nobody shows up, let's work on this other project. Um, and so it's, it's something that I think our committee should know more about them and they might be able to, they might value knowing more about us. I mean, we're still just getting started and mostly in an information gathering stage. Um, but as people become interested in our committee, some of them, might really resonate with our committee's work, specific work. And some of them might be like, oh yeah, I'm kind of interested in diversity. And they might really gravitate more towards what Hadley Learns is doing. But it would be, I think it would be good for us to know more about each other. So I'm kind of trying to be a conduit between the two. And does that make sense? Yeah, so I'm on their email list. Anybody can get on their email list that wants to. Um, you know, it's kind of a come all ye. You know, there's no limit on how many people or no formal joining process, anything like that. It's just, it's more about the personal work and the actually doing it kind of doing the, sort of doing the personal work, doing the work. And where I see this committee is more about finding out what's going on, researching the history, making recommendations to the select board at some point maybe, or like the, uh, what was the scorecard thing that we talked about last month? That that's, fits, to, to me, that fits very much in the, in the work of this committee. It's like, what's going on? Where are we at? Where are we doing well? Where are we doing poorly as a town? where Hadley Learns is like, I'm really interested in whatever and being an activist about that and finding out about how to do that. Does that make sense? The sort of two different um, thrusts of, of activity. 
Do you have a recommendation for us how to move on this? Maybe it would be help. Maybe we would learn more rather than going through me, who's like still kind of wandering around with my eyes bugged out, going, wow, look at all this. Um, maybe have Humera come and talk to us about Hadley Learns, or I wrote down the name of the person who sent me the first Zoom link, Tony Lynn Morelli, um, I guess is also one of the organizers. You know, talk to somebody who's organizing it and, and helping to make it happen, rather than me who just sort of wandered in and go, wow, they have all this good stuff. <laughs> so would you recommend that we have them on our list of people to yeah put this to interview or ask yeah. people to talk to the committee yeah or maybe i do like i did for the senior center and take joanne's six questions and uh see if either humera or tony or somebody who's part of hadley learns who's sort of more in an organizer role would be willing to fill that out so that we get started um, kind of getting a, a broader sense of, you know, what organizations are in town doing this kind of work. Yeah, the, the, re the report you gave from uh, Haley Wood at the Hadley Senior Center was very thorough. Wasn't it wonderful? And uh, gave a lot of information. Yeah. Um, maybe that's the way to go with this. Yeah, that's what I mean. I love Joanne's questions because they're very um, inviting and, uh, you know, give people a lot of leeway to talk about whatever, whatever they're doing. You know, they're they're broad enough to to really invite all kinds of of answers like. I'm sort of jumping in because I want to find a way for us to do something specific with this yeah. information. Yeah how it fits in with what we're doing. Yeah. Some actionable suggestions. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, I, I mean, I think it falls into the, uh, the, the realm of what Joanne was asking about. What are the other groups? What, are, what other groups are there in Hadley? What are they doing? Which is the kind of information this committee needs to be gathering for, you know, for a picture of the town at this point. Anyone else want to jump in on this? Sounds good. Um, yeah, yeah, sounds good. I'm interested. Are we, are we coming to a place where we need to make a list of people we want to, to address the committee? Uh, a list of those town groups or people like this that we want to systematically hear from? Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, I mean, didn't we start that list last time? We talked about it, but we didn't make a specific list. Mm -hmm. We began yeah. to talk about it. Yeah, and we probably want to prioritize who we want to talk to first because we aren't an unlimited number of people. <laughs> well, once we, once we decide who we want to hear from, then we have to decide the order right. we hear from them. Yeah. Um, so is that an item of business now, or shall we uh, do that at our next meeting? Hi, Andrea. Um, maybe if we have time at the end of our agenda okay. items, we can come back to this right. and try to make a decision about how to move on this. Yeah. Is that okay with everybody? Thank you, Sarah. Um, Pat. Yeah, thank you, Wayne. Um, following up to the learning about what other, you know, groups, organizations are doing in town, I reached out to the chair of the parish council at Most Holy Redeemer, which is a Catholic church, um, and she appreciated the invitation because they were going to have a parish council meeting on October the 19th, and um, she raised the topic of diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, just by way of context, the council consists of eight parishioners, so lay people, members of the church, and the pastor, Father Piat Pavlis, who's, um, who's the priest um, at Most Holy Redeemer. Um, they 
They began by identifying their goal as to provide an open and inclusive church where people can engage in meaningful worship and experience a sense of community. Um, and then they talked about how do they actually accomplish that, that goal? Um, you know, what are they currently doing? Um, the per a person does not have to be a registered member of, of the parish of the church to attend services, which include three services, three masses, one on Saturday and two on Sunday. Um, and if they want to become a parishioner, there really are no, no obstacles to registering. You just register with your name and your address and your phone number. Um, they acknowledge that although there weren't structural barriers to becoming a parishioner, um, they recognize that the, the community is overwhelmingly white um, with only a small percentage of black and uh, a group they refer to as Hispanic and Vietnamese worshipers. And they could understand how it might not be comfortable for a person of color to come into the church to attend services um, and then to join the parish because, because um, they would be in the minority. Um, and that as a result of this, a few parishioners on their own took it upon themselves to approach new people um, and welcome them. And I am a member of the parish and I am a relative newcomer to Hadley. And that was my experience. I mean, it's a pretty established community and um, Catholic churches by nature today really have a lot of senior citizens in the pews, not a lot of young people in general, in general ac across the country. And, and, you know, that has been my experience at Most Holy Redeemer. Um, the, the pastor, Father Piot, has included the topics of racism and diversity in his sermons, his homilies, and in prayers, um, but they're always related to the prescribed Sunday readings. Um, and then they also have um, two, um, two outreach um, efforts in, in partnership with the Hadley First Congregational Church. They co-sponsor weekend meals program it's twice a month. Um, the Congregational Church does one of those weeks and, and Most Holy Redeemer does another. And then they have a, they house the Hadley Food Pantry on the Most Holy Redeemer um, property. And, and those programs are open and inclusive to all regardless of race. Um, beliefs or associations. So that that is their, um, you know, reflection on what they currently do. Um, as I said, they were appreciative of the invitation to engage in the topic. And as a result, um, they've committed to working on becoming a more welcoming church. Um, they're actually going to um, formalize encouraging parishioners to reach out to new people, especially people of color. Um, who may not feel welcome in a predominantly white space. Um, they're going to develop some written materials to introduce people to the parish and to survey what people's spiritual needs are. And then they are committed to continuing the discussion. Oh, cool. Excellent. <clears throat> Mark, I have this, I can send it to you if you would like these notes too. That would, that would be great. Yep. And don't forget the potatoes. Oh yes, yes, yes. I will. If there, if there are any, <laughs> thank you. I appreciate. I would like those notes too, because I'm okay. doing all these okay. things that people are doing. Thank you, Pat. Very nice. I mean, I, I think that they have a relationship with the First Con Congregational Church, and and I noticed Sarah in the notes that you provided that the Hadley Senior Center talked about engaging, you know, the local leaders of faith communities. So. You know, I think that, you know, this is a start and to try to build on that, you know, right. I would say is sort of the next step here. Mm -hmm. yeah. Any other comments? I'd like to thank you for that wonderful uh, insight and for all the cooperation that they gave in, in reaching out. I think that's helpful. Thank you. You're welcome. Be right back. Anything else? While the potatoes are being taken.
take oh, she's getting potatoes. I'm going to grab a snack. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know we had breaks in our meetings, but I guess we did. <laughs> um, yeah. Is there anything else comes to mind while we're waiting for them to return the, um, out of this oh, report sorry. that we could move uh, move forward with? Anything like this that we should be doing? Um, yes, Sarah. Um, I just wondered, do we have off the top of anybody's head, uh, are there other churches or groups that we have reached out to that we haven't heard back from yet? I wonder if Joanne has a checklist or anything like that. There were two others I reached out to and did not hear back, but one of them had a lot on their website, which I think I talked about. Okay. Thank you. And I did, um, I think I reported at the last meeting that I found out who was handling the social justice at the UU in Northampton. And I was going to, I have not gotten a hold of them to see if they have any people from Hadley that could speak to their Hadley experiences yet. Yeah, that congregation draws from a lot of different towns outside yeah. of Northampton, so. Oh, yeah. Very likely. There's also um, something to be thoughtful about. There's a Western Mass um, atheist, secular humanist group, I know, too, that does meetups in Northampton. That might, might be another community to reach out to. What's I know that doesn't that technically constitute a faith group, but it's in the same realm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Amy, sure. what's the name of that group? I think it's called MASH, like the show. I think it's like Western Mass, like M-A, and then Atheist Secular Humanist. Is anybody willing to reach out to them to just to ask a question? Are you interested in talking to us? Uh, or letting us know what you're doing in this area. Anybody be willing to do that? Uh, if no uh, one else wants to, I can try to reach out. Uh, you'd like it says that they. I I just I heard about it once, and it said that they have almost a thousand members. That seems like quite a lot. So, um, might be something. I can do that, it, you know, as we have some evidence of, in your background noise that you have other things on your plate. <laughs> and also you're, you're connecting us to the schools and what's going on there. So thank you, Mark. Um, anything else on this before we move on to number five? Okay, Mark, you're gonna report back, um, feedback from the town administrator about are emailing each other. Yeah, um, I reached out to David Nixon and copied um, Carolyn, who is the new um, town administrator. D um, if you're not aware, David Nixon is phasing out and is called the deputy town administrator. Um, I have not met uh, Carolyn yet. But one of my other committees, I heard she's going to come to one of the next meetings. So, uh, or at least Zoom to one of our next meetings. So uh, looking forward to meeting her then. But I think uh, the response I got was basically to err on the side of they, they didn't even like us um, sending out blind carbon copies, you know, so I, you know, they wanted everything public. So, I don't know. I, I you know, I, my first take on it was I felt really kind of hogtied. Um, so I, I, I will have to reach out to them again. And I mean, there's gotta be some balance. Um, hmm. So. Sarah? I wonder if, one way to keep all of our communication public would be instead of using an email list, find uh, 
one of these online bulletin board chat board kind of things instead that anybody in town could I mean, does, is there room on the town server for something? How do other committees do this? You know, this is a wheel we don't need to re reinvent. Right. I mean, we, we need to be able to communicate between meetings. We can't just only do committee work while we're in this one hour or meeting a week. We wouldn't get in. You know, I, I mean, all the stuff that we're reporting on that, you know, oh, I reached out to this person and got that. I mean, I can we not I even, I don't there, I, there are also going to be things that cannot, are not legally allowed to be shared publicly. Like if I solicit survey materials from minors at the school, that is illegal yeah. to share um, right. publicly. So, so some of that can't go. Yeah, some but, of that can't go out. <laughs> yeah, right. So things like that you could summarize, but not directly share. Right. Exactly, because their identities have to be protected. Right. right. My feeling also is that there's business of the committee, which is just business. Yeah. Uh, the next meeting is going to be this. Da, 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 da. Yeah. Um, that I frankly think um, going through the town site, which has been onerous every time I've done it, uh, mm. there's been a different person just for the announcements of our meetings. Yeah. I've dealt with three different people now, and mm. what I thought was the procedure turned out this last time not to be the procedure. Oh. Um, and it's a minor thing, but it yeah. took time and effort to mm. jump through the hoops. Right. And I feel if we burden ourselves with that just about basic stuff, that is not keeping anything from the community that the community would be interested in. I, I, you might gather that I'm resisting <laughs> sending everything to the town, whoever that is, um, rather than communicating by blind copy with the committee. And certainly we should be able to talk with each other. I think that was clear yeah. from the beginning. Any two of us or three of us can talk. Right. It's just when we act as a committee. Right. That uh, I I have nothing I want to hide about what we're doing. So my feeling is, uh, unless we're forbidden. Um, I I. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Go ahead Mark. Well, I I serve on two other committees, and I would. Without throwing anyone under the bus, I would say that we're all on different on different fields. Um, I would say probably the strictest um, I'm experiencing so far is the planning board, and there, you know, th th three members of that have been on there for over 30 years. So that, and one of them is an attorney. Um, so the way I understood from Bill Dwyer was, you know, he gets information, he shoots it out to all of us by email. We don't reply back. Like, I think I replied back once early on and they're like, uh, that's public, you know. So I don't, I don't, I will reply back to one or the other, but not to the group. Um, and that's my understanding, and I could be wrong, but my understanding is, Two people having a conversation is not a problem, but when you get more than two, or maybe there's some number, um, it becomes, it starts to get into the realm of a public, a, a meeting that should be public. Um, so that's, uh, again, if we weren't in COVID, I, I'd just pop into the town administrator and say, you know, who should I ask about this? And they might send me more pamphlets to read or or just answer my questions with some more um, broader answers i have two what specific did? questions uh, one is um 
as chair, if I send something out to the committee to alert you about something or to request information, uh, that's one type of communication. Um, a second kind of communication might be between members of a subcommittee of which we will eventually have more than one, I'm assuming. I hope. Um, if we're going to do the business that we're doing, we can't do it as a whole committee. All of so I'm envisioning that we'll be doing subcommittees. And I would think that those subcommittees would have to communicate in some way uh, without going through the town site um, and making that public because that subcommittee is going to report back to the full committee, which will be a public record. Right. So if it were up to me, I would say that uh, we are totally within the both the spirit and the meaning of the rules for me to blind copy the committee with directions or basic information about what we're going to be doing procedural things and that subcommittees two or three or four should be able to privately communicate the work of their committee that on which they're going to report to the full committee um, in my, um, <laughs> Mark, when you sent me that email from her, um, saying that we should run everything through the town, my response was to basically forget it and send out the notice to everybody. And so far, uh, no uh, I haven't been chastised, nor has there been any penalty for doing that. No. I'm, I mean, how, I'm, how else are we going to know if you don't send us stuff? Well, as I understand it, I'm supposed to send everything through the Hadley website, and it goes public. So mm -hmm. everything I send to the committee should be going through the town crier, where everybody can hear and see. Right. And I... I don't see any other committee doing that. Uh, of course, I'm not following the website that posted. But yeah, I don't know how it works on the on exactly in in COVID on the planning board. But I know that on the planning board, um, Bill Dwyer will get. Let's say uh, let's say Sarah was going to apply to add a garage, and she sends Bill her plans. He sends them out to all of us. Right now. But, but they're also, he sends, you know, they go to the town clerk where they're public, right. you can go and see them. So, you know, right. so my neighbors can go and see, you know, right. what's she doing, you know, do we and like so, that? And so maybe that's where that chat thing might take that off the, off, off the table for us. I can see the wisdom of that. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I see that there is some wisdom to that and I understand it and, um, right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, because we want the notice of our meetings to go out in a way that anybody in town can can twig on it and go, "Oh, I'd like to attend." Right. Even if they're not a member of the committee, they're allowed to attend. Right. That's the well, idea. Oh yeah. yeah that's oh, yeah. all. Our meetings are public. And yeah. right. Recorded and right. And so they should be able to access the notice and the agenda and that and the minutes, obviously. Yeah. But, you know, if Joanne and Pat and I are, are gathering information from churches and groups in Hadley on what they're doing, I don't see why we can't email among ourselves and coordinate, coordinate that. Yeah. I see that as a subcommittee. What you're just yeah, as a subcommittee. Yeah. And then you report back to the committee. Right. Is this something that we could potentially ask Christian about, since he has perhaps a little bit more clarity on procedure and protocol? I don't know if Andrea wants to. Chirp I mean, is the issue good idea? Is the issue like if me and Pat and Joanne are on a subcommittee, should we or should we not be CCing Wayne or Mark as a record keeper? Should we just keep it within the three of us? I've also been cut back to 
fifty percent hours for UMass, so I have some more time on my hands. So I might uh, I might do a little more delving into the legal. Uh, there's got to be something I can find on like Massachusetts, you know, Ethics Commission or somewhere, and I'll find out. Yeah, um, Andrea, would you perhaps talk with Christian about this? Yeah, I can ask him. Um, and if I have anything really clear that I can report back, then I'll definitely send an email to the whole group. But if I feel like it's just further confusing it and we should rely on one source, then or if I your emails won't. if your emails um, illegal, I'll post bond. <laughs> 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 we'll bust I, you out. I, Mark, I, I am calling you for everything now. Now that I know you're gonna, you know, be able to bust me out of jail. Be careful what you ask for. <laughs> well, I, I think maybe what we need to ask is that um, there. I don't know if there's any sort of difference here, but I feel like our committee is dealing with things that are potentially sensitive and very highly personal and we're soliciting information that is potentially extremely private and that people might be afraid of repercussions or retaliation based on sharing some of these pieces with us. And I think that there is also a fine line between making everything public and providing the public with what they need to know, but also protecting individual people's privacy um, as well. So I'm wondering, I mean, obviously if someone needs a permit for a garage, that's one thing. If someone wants to tell a story about an act of violence that happened to them in the community and they want to remain anonymous, that's a different thing. Yeah. Good point. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. We have a complex issue here. Um, I think what makes it even more complex, this is a brand new committee and I'm still trying to figure out what we're doing. <laughs> you know, don't, don't we still need to get our uh, mission statement and goals approved? Isn't that something we also need to perhaps have on our horizon very soon? So. It's my recollection that they did not approve that at the select board. My understanding is they were going to tell us what they didn't approve. And I haven't heard anything from them. So, um, yeah, I, it may be the wish of the committee that I contact them and ask. And if you'll pardon me, I'm going to take my bread out of the bread maker. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> yeah, if we weren't being recorded, I'd say something along the lines of don't ask, don't tell, you know. <laughs> No. Sounds like by the end of the evening, we're all going to know what everyone's having for dinner. For dinner. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be the main point of business. We are aware of all of our dinner plans. I'm still in my office, but I know it's for dinner because I made it last night. It's getting heated up. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, so I'm... Um, I, I feel like I'm reporting back, but I haven't done the research since that response. And I really need to look into that more um, because I kind of got the response and I was like, that can't be right because no municipal committee would function, you know. So I, I have to delve into to that d deeper and um, uh Maybe I'll contact a few people offline. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then there, I mean, there's layers of, uh, it's like before there was email, people, you know, for hundreds of years before there was email, people had their ways of doing business. And, you know, like in the school that Oriel grew up in, I was like, oh, well, there's the parking lot. You know, that's where we do our business. <laughs> <laughs> that works until there's more than five grades. Um, and then there's email. And so you have to have new protocols around email. And now there's COVID. And that sort of adds a whole nother layer because that pushes all of us onto email. So there, and there's other committees in town that have already been dealing with this. So there's gotta be some analogies. That. Mm. 
it is it is really important how we do our business. Right. I'm concerned that we're going to spend a lot of time on this instead of doing our business. Right. And so yeah. I would like <laughs> and I'm going to dig into it because it's real. I'm I'm a, you know I want to to defend the town administrator's office. I'm not sure that I phrased the question right to get the answer I wanted. That okay. I might have, if I if there was some ambiguity in there, maybe that's what they were trying to shut down to be on the safe side. So um, again, I will do a little more research and hopefully um, have a clearer answer that I can share. Hopefully, before our next meeting, I can share legally. I would. I will count yeah. on that, Mark. Uh, it'll be very helpful. And I will also be happy to receive any suggestions from you about how to how to do our business so that we are within the rules and right. the spirit of uh, right. of open meetings, uh, but also move forward and get things done. Um, so may we uh, may I phrase it this way that we table this issue uh, and hear in the next meeting or get a report from Mark and suggestions from any of you as to how we might proceed doing our business in a way that is open and uh, accessible, but also um, feasible. Um, yeah, and I just want to add one more comment on there. Yeah. Probably some of you have seen, maybe you haven't. Uh, and I can't tell you exactly where I see it, whether I see it coming out of town hall um, emails or whether it's on the planning board and whether it comes from Bill Dwyer or, or all of the above. But there's a common uh, bottom of the email thing about, um, I think it comes from, I think David Nixon puts it in there about just warning you that all emails on a town committee are subject to um, their public information. They can be requested. So, um, you know, uh, you know, not not that we're um, saying anything awful, other than sharing dinner plans. You know, but uh, just well, I take Amy's. Um comment very uh, seriously. Uh, if we reach out to someone uh, that we want to hear from, uh, do we acknowledge that we've asked that person to speak to us? Uh, if that person doesn't want their name used, um, I, I doubt that we're going to get into that situation, but we should certainly be aware of it. Um, if I may, the school has the same notification on the bottom of all of our emails that are, it's automatic and public citizens can request um, emails, but that is a fairly rigorous process to request those, uh, those communications and any um, issues of privacy are still protected when those communications are requested. So for example, if a parent was like, I want to see all of Miss." Lanham's emails to every child in the district that they can't do that. Um, so there, there's still ways well, to protect that. other people's privacy while showing the public servants communications that are applicable to whatever the situation is. I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful and confident that we'll, we'll determine what the balance is between protection and hamstringing, you know, so if we could get some resolution of this before our next meeting. That would be my goal. Um, how would you communicate that to us, Mark? I'd send it to you and you could send it out to everyone. And or, I I can send, or I can send it out to everyone. And I would post it on the town website? Well, yeah, why don't I also <laughs> ask the town about that um, we were talking about getting some, some, you know, chat room, some forum that, you know, I'll ask them if that's 
something that other organizations are doing if there's some option that we have well, I, or if there's if, if, if there's an archive under you know if there's a pay if they can create a page on the town website for us and we can we can post our archive there yeah i i certainly want to honor the towns uh, honor the the uh honor being open to anyone in the community who wants to access what we're doing uh, it's uh right we're not trying to hide anything we're just trying to function first and foremost i'm not looking to hide anything uh but i also want to make our work less onerous um I mean, we're ordinary citizens doing a service to the town, and if we make it so hard to do, we're going to be bogged down, and uh, and I don't want to be that way. Uh, so we can walk that line in between. So thank you, Mark, uh, for bringing that back at our next meeting. That will be definitely be an agenda item for the next time to tell us how we can communicate efficiently and openly. Um, I have a, I have a hope. I have a hope that in our next meeting we can we can come up with some specific ways to move forward that are going to yield us some more information. Um, and so I would welcome any suggestions about how I could phrase that as an agenda item. Uh, for the next meeting. I'll struggle with it a little bit and suggest to you uh, try to try to make that my suggestion for an agenda item next time. Um, and we'll do so in time for us to have it and be prepared to talk about it. Uh, this this letter, uh, Sarah, that you sent from um, information from uh, Haley, Haley Wood, Haley Wood. From the, was, from the agent. Uh, yeah. Amazing and yeah. very helpful. And mm -hmm. that kind of information, I think, is the kind of thing that we're looking for from the various departments. When we talked earlier about who we wanted to talk to, uh, the school superintendent, uh, the principals, the police chief, et cetera, uh, we still haven't made our list, and um, and I'd like to find a, a way to do so. I think the gathering information phase uh, is upon us, and we have a lot of good ideas and a lot of good intentions, mm -hmm. and I think grounding ourselves in the facts of what's going on in the town already would be very helpful right. to formulate our next steps. Yeah, yeah. I think Joanne's questions were a great starting point for that. And I don't know if everybody has those already somewhere on their computer to look at and review and see, you know, oh, we should also ask this or we should rephrase that. But those were a terrific. I just basically copied and pasted her questions into my email to the senior center. Okay. They were terrific. So those were those were Haley's questions. They were Joanne's questions that I copied and pasted into the email that Haley answered. Oh, right. Yeah. Maybe we should be thinking about and and I will incorporate that in, into my. Yeah. Motion. Yeah. I mean, I was thinking I would do the same thing with Hadley Learns. You know, either Humera mm -hmm. or. Uh, Tony, somebody send those same six questions to whoever seems to be in charge, if there is anybody in charge of Hadley Learns, um, to start getting some of that information from them too. Yeah, the first question is, what is the Hadley Senior Center already doing? Yeah, I just that personalized it that way. About diversity, yeah. about inclusion, about right. other things. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, Joanne, would you be willing to make these questions generic? So I, that's what I did. To begin with, I sent I, these out to you all already, mm -hmm. like a couple months ago. So yeah. they're they're generic, and then you fill in the names as whatever group that you're. I mean, I'm happy to send it again. 
That's okay. I apologize for, for that's okay for losing that. Uh, <laughs> okay. It's, it's the most okay. things that I lose every day. So it's not, <laughs> not just you. Um, no, and that and you might have sent that before I decided I needed to set up folders under. Sure. You know, I, I I've now got. I've got um, under this committee. I have resources, minutes, agenda, materials. You know, and under materials, I have senior center. So I, you know, you, if you want to resend them, I'll find a place to. Happy to do it. Yeah. Sure. Then I, I think I'm probably going to suggest that we adapt these questions to each of the list people on our list that we were going to ask for interviews or whatever we're going to call it. To mm -hmm. ask them to speak exactly to the and then come up with a concrete way of doing that so we have a plan for the next uh, next few months of how we're going to gather information upon which to act um, and I, I'll propose that and we can alter it and adapt it or change it or whatever but uh, mm -hmm. I will make that my job to do and anyone else is welcome to suggest how we should go about that. But I, uh, I just feel that's where we are. We need to get more information from our town officials and uh, parts of the town. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else for the good of the committee? Yes, Sarah. Um, how is Andrea coming on the uh, scorecard project? I haven't made any progress and I feel really uh, um, overwhelmed right now with a lot of other responsibilities um, to the point where I just don't foresee in the next like even three months being able to make much headway. Um, so if somebody else could sort of follow um, you know, sort of the, the, do the next steps, you know, I think it's a matter of meeting with the human resource, the new human resources person for the town, probably the town administrator, and maybe the superintendent or the school committee. And just starting there in terms of like, a real basic scorecard. Um, where we're just tracking the sort of employment and education demographics. I think that would probably be the easy, you know, that's already information that's probably, you know, can be gleaned from documents already provided to the state and to DESE, especially for the school system. So, yeah, I think if somebody else could do that, I just don't see myself having the uh, follow through right now, unfortunately. Did you earlier, Andrea, send a description or a list of that scorecard to us? How that's worded, what you would send to people? Did you send that to us? I don't think that I sent anything. Um, I don't really have something to refer to um, that's for a municipal, you know, for something like this. Um, so I think what I had just mentioned was doing like a quick Google search and seeing what's out there that universities and um, some corporations and are choosing to do, um, but I don't, I, you know, I, I think I, I'm thinking of it as a report card and I'm thinking of it as something that the committee or the subcommittee could just, again, just come up with some real low hanging fruit at first um, and build from there. But yeah, I don't have anything specifically to refer to. Could could you say what this scorecard is measuring? Is there a list you could 
just off the top of your head say we're asking about this 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 so what you would do is like for instance in one column you would have um you know let's just say you know the employees of the town and and so in one column you would have all of the demographics you'd have the percentage of white latino black other um and then you would have the somebody would use a resource, uh, you know, a reputable resource to say, okay, well, this is the demographic of Hampshire County. And so how well is Hadley doing to employ people reflective of our, you know, our county or, or you could even say our town. So that would be one is just employment. And then with school, it would be you know, um, what is the percentage of, again, those, those demographics in our school system? What is the percentage that graduate? What is the, per Amy, I think you've shared this, you know, tracking the percentage of the disciplinary um, actions of the school, you know, like for instance, if the school is for some reason being more disciplinarian toward people of color, that would be a good thing to recognize. Um, and so the school is already doing that. And so that it would just be a matter of taking that information and deciding what would be good to share, let's say with our town annual report. Um, it, would, it would be a report card snapshot of things that would be deemed good to understand in terms of equity in our town. And so we would do this for uh, employees of the town, uh, or we have it for the school system from Amy. Uh, would you do this for the fire department, for the police department? Well, that would all fall under. That's all. Yeah. That would all fall under the department. Of, that that would all be human resources, and I believe again that that information is already. Um, it's already the data is already there. I believe. Where might yeah. I find that? Talking to the yeah. the human resources director of the town, and talking to the superintendent of the town. The school information is all public. Um, we're actually working, I think I've said this at a past meeting that the faculty is going through some of that information too with access, not only discipline, but like access to AP courses and things having to do with race, disability and gender and what classes they're taking and how well they're doing in classes. So I think what Andrea is saying is that we bring all that information together, summarize it, give our assessment of where the town stands, where the town could be, and like give any recommendations to get better. One other area that I would say, I don't know, again, if we have any authority over this, and I don't think we do, but like, it might be interesting to look at housing as well, and like breakdown of, I know that uh, school segregation is a major topic in education. So, that's usually related to housing segregation. Uh, so we could potentially look at that. I don't know if that's just- Good. What, do you, what do you mean by housing segregation? Just be like specific. Uh, well, like practices that have been around for a long time, like redlining and- Oh, oh okay, gotcha. Yeah, all right, yeah. Which may not affect Hadley. Maybe that would be a positive thing on the school scorecard, who knows? Or maybe it wouldn't be, um, but it might be interesting to- Check that out. Again, I will welcome. We have uh, three minutes left in our meeting. And I will say again, I welcome any suggestions about how to direct this into some specific document or um, uh, here's the word I'm looking for, uh, some way of getting this information into a readable form and digestible form. And you can send me uh, emails if you have ideas. Uh, at the moment, I'm 
struggling with how to make sense out of this and how- I'm sorry if I wasn't clear. So I was suggesting that the members from the committee that have the time could have a meet, one person could have a meeting with the human resources director. One person could meet with Annie McKenzie with the lens of let's work toward a published, what, what is it that we could publish that would be helpful for our town citizens to understand equity in our town and how we're doing to achieve it and work with those two entities that are already collecting this data and start from there. Good. What was the second one that was at the schools or? You said the human resources director and what was the second? Oh, sorry, Annie McKenzie, the um, superintendent of schools. Okay, yeah. Do, does, um, Andrea, does this data include demographics about the students? I think it's up to the, so again, I know like sort of in my discussions, I feel like I got the tip of the iceberg and understanding these things. I'm not an expert in it. So I think it's a, again, a matter of, mm -hmm. are there people on the committee that could make that commitment to setting up those meetings and maybe, yeah, maybe gathering information to then bring back to the bigger group. Um, I don't, I, I would guess that the state requires all kinds of uh, economic and demographic, yeah, all kinds of demographic information. So the place to start would be the human resources director, you say? And the superintendent. Right. And the superintendent of schools. Thank you all. Um, uh, we have run out of time. Uh, <laughs> and I thank you for your attention and good, good work. Uh, I appreciate the good reports that have come in and look forward to our next meeting. And um, Next meeting would be the first Monday of December, which would be Pearl Harbor Day. Is that right? December 7th. That's an ominous. Seven? December 7th. And do we want to continue with the 5.15 to 6.30? That seems to work. Um, yeah. Do we need a show of hands or does anybody disagree that we should? Okay, good. good. Stay with the uh, hour and 15 minutes. And I will set up the Zoom thing with the town person uh, quickly. I have to wait to do that because in my request to set up the Zoom meeting, I have to give them our agenda. Oh, here we get the meeting. Minutes and people give me suggestions. We can't come up with an agenda. Da 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 da. So uh, okay, just to connect learning. that, Wayne. Just to connect that circle. So, are there two people from the committee that can make the commitment to do that? Because if we're only if we don't know how to communicate in between meetings, then I think this needs to get communicated now. If it's something that the well, it is something that the committee said was a goal. I can work with the education subcommittee to um, do the education piece Thank and you. to summarize that data. People can volunteer to me. If we don't have anybody right now, you can send me an email and volunteer for an area to investigate whatever. <laughs> comes up. We used to use it as an incentive to attend meetings that if you didn't attend, you got nominated to, to do things like this. It was a good incentive. <laughs> I don't feel like I have that kind of fun. <laughs> well, I was thinking about Margaret, and it seems like it might be up her alley to talk to the human resources person. So it'd be worth asking her. And any of you who decide you want to take on one of these areas, not all of them, but one of them that is of particular interest. Uh, well, I think Amy committed those of us who volunteered for the education subcommittee. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Amy just threw herself under under the school bus. <laughs> I, 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 I threw the I whole know. committee under the bus. It's not just me. <laughs> okay. Yeah, my, my notes say that Andrea, Pat, and Margaret were interested in this project. I, I'm interested, but I'm not I'm not volunteering at this minute. But I love statistics. I just love stats. So. I can I can make the I'll reach out to Margaret and see if she would be willing to do it and uh, let her know that I expressed 
you know, my inability to do it and see if she would be willing to do that. So I can do that. And then if she's agreeable, then she can contact you, Wayne. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, I will entertain a motion to, to adjourn. Moved. Moved. Okay. Second. Second. All those in favor, raise your hands. Good. Uh, we are adjourned with the, with noting that no one in our group was wearing a mask. <gasps> Socially distant. I'm being very purposeful about this and very honest. But we are distanced. You're right, Mark. Mm -hmm. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Everybody vote. <laughs> nice job, Wayne. Vote early and often. <laughs> Good night, everyone.